Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope that this Shabbat finds you well and at peace. I was reading this week and found a beautiful reading from Rabbi Chaim Stern of Blessed Memory. He shares the following. When the darkness is too dark for me, give me light, O source of light, and renew my vision, my hope, my dream, my faith, that the darkness will not last my sense that despair is not the last word, and the courage to believe in my dreams. As it is read in Psalms chapter 4, verse 9, Now I will lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, Eternal One, make me live unafraid. As the week turns towards Shabbat, I pray that my mind be less troubled, my thoughts are more peaceful and tranquil, my courage grows as I reflect on the words of the psalmist, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. Yes, there is hope in me, for it may be that tomorrow I shall put forth buds again and clothe myself in fruit. Baruch ata Adonai shomea tefillah. Praise be the Eternal One who hearkens to prayer. As we turn to Shabbat, let it feel like a springtime of our soul. Let the buds of our lives open up and let us turn ourselves towards the sun. Shabbat Shalom. I now have the privilege of calling upon Nancy Kennedy Barnett and Jim Barnett to light the Shabbat candles, to lift up the Kiddush cup, to sing the blessings. And it's appropriate because the two of you are blessings to our community. You bring tremendous light and sweetness to our days. Shabbat Shalom, Nancy. Shabbat Shalom, Jim. Shabbat Shalom. Baruch atah anai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedeshanu v'mitzvot hav v'tzivanu l'hadlik ner shel shabat. Baruch atah adonai Eloheinu melech haolam b'rei pri haglafen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Baruch atah adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu v'tzivanu l'had l'ikner V'tzivanu v'tzivanu l'had l'ikner V'tzivanu v'tzivanu l'had l'ikner What makes a fire burn is space between the logs, a breathing space. Too much of a good thing, too many logs packed into tight can douse the flames almost as surely as a pail of water would. So building fires requires attention to the spaces in between as much as to the wood. When we are able to build open spaces in the same way we have learned to pile on the logs then we can come to see how it is fuel and absence of fuel together that make the fire possible. We only need to lay a log lightly from time to time. A fire grows simply because the space is there with openings in which the flame that knows just how it wants to burn can find its way. <laughs> Yalma di vrachir hute, Yamlich malchute, 
And so now we turn to the call to worship. And as we rise and face towards Jerusalem, we direct our hearts towards the divine. We turn to the Baruch Hu. Baruch Adonai Amevorach Le'olam va'eh Over the past weeks, it's been really remarkable to look outside my window, to venture into my backyard or for a walk around the neighborhood and to see winter melting away and the spring literally budding up before our eyes. God's creations are truly miraculous and our liturgists, the ones who wrote our prayers, they understood this and they taught us that we should be thankful for the ever-changing world all around us each and every day. And so we pray these words together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechochma Poteach Sha'arim, Uvitwuna Mishane Itim, Umachalif et Tazmanim, Umesader et a Kochavim, Bemishmeru Tehem Barakia Kirtsono, Bore Yom Balila, Golel Or Mipne Hoshech, Bechoshech Mipne Or, Uma Avir Yom Ume Vilila, Umavdil Ben Yom Uvein Lila, and O Nights of Oat Shemo, El Chai the Kayan Tamid in Loch Alenu Leolamba Ed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Hamariv Aravim, Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. Everlasting love you offered your people, Israel, by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. We join together now as one people, declaring the oneness of our God. Let's sing together words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevot Machuto Ha <laughs> Vidibarta Baham Bishiv Taha Bavetaha 
Uvlechtecha va derech, Ushochbecha, Uvekumecha, Ukshartam le oho talya decha, Beha yule tota fod bene necha, Uchtav tam, Al mizuzo betecha, Uvisha arecha, Leman tis kiru. Vasitem et komitz votai, vitem groshim leloechem. Ani Adonai eloechem. Asher otze heti etchem, meheretz mitzrayim, liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem, Emet. Tradition teaches that when the Israelites crossed the sea and escaped Egyptian slavery, they sang the words, Micha Mocha. And as we sing Micha Mocha today, we pray that we will be inspired to create a world where everybody can celebrate freedom. We pray together, Mi Chamocha. Mi Chamocha v'elim Adonai Mi Chamocha nedar b'kodesh Norati lot Ose fele Norati lot Ose blown the marketplace away. There is a song in the wind and joy in the trees. The Sabbath arrives in the world, scattering a song in the silence of the night. Eternity utters a day. <laughs> Oh, 
טובים, וקונה הכל, וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם, למען שמו בי אהבה. מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן, ברוך אתה אדוני, מגן אברהם בעזרת שרה. אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני, מחיי הכל אתה רב להושיע. מחלקי החיים בחסד. מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים, סומך נופלים ורופא חולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו, לישני העפר, מי חמוך בעל גבורות, ומדום הלך, מלך ממית, ומחייה, ומצמיח ישוע, בנאמן אתה לחיות הכל. ברוך אתה אדוני, מחייה הכל. אתה קדוש, בשמך קדוש, וקדושים בכל יום. יהללו חסלה, ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. Thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, 
for the richness of the earth which day by day sustains us. For all these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch atah Adonai, hatov shimcha ulchana'eh lehodot. We think now of members of our community who are in need of healing, whether it be a refuat nefesh or a refuat guf, a healing of spirit or a healing of body. Particularly in our hearts and minds, we are thinking of Lee Applebaum, Shandel Batfreda Melka, Charlene Petlin, Shirley Graham, Ryder Fell, Alicia Shimon Ben David, Phyllis Slavin, Keith Mandel, Steve Toplinski, Ethan Kaddish, Nissan Chaim Ben Ziva Vizalman, Laura Bublitz, Keturah Bublitz, Ari Bublitz, Stephen Maglowski, Zelig Ben Avraham Vihudit, Jean Robertson, Barry Bruskin, Julie Borakoff, Dolores Michelot, Margot Roz, Carl Smeda, Martin Steigman, Mark Bloom, Carol Dubin, Rachel Batfruma, Kira Yudkovich, David Goldstein, B.J. Epstein, Otto Feller, Weston Bennicki, Michael Keller, Kupobot Roslin, Claire, Claire Fabric, Marilyn Hurwitz Kahn, Wendy Schuster, Mark Pash, Chris Gould, Ma Randy Matsoff, Mackenzie Clyde, June Robertson, Kimberly Hostad, Doreen Sager, Samsara Vizkaya, Yaakov Benchana, Sharon Rotman, Eliyahu Ben Maxim, Man Maxim Nemela, John Schnapp, Ginger Pash, Rivka Bat David Vidavora, Bob Radke, Kerry Hirsch, Lyle Rubel, Grace Block, Jackie Blumberg, Mark Cook, Moshe Ben Nechama, Alvin Ugent, Karen Pearson, Tony Gregg, Darlene Saxton, Judy Foley, Hal Glick, Edward Pierce, Yehudit Bat Debrosha Vigadalia, Hillel Ben Chana Esther Vishmuel, Jean Bass. I invite you to hold the names of your loved ones in your hearts, whether we've mentioned their names or whether you wish to hold on to them in your spirit as you think of our loved ones. So we turn to words of tradition. Baruch Ata Adonai Rofei HaCholim. Blessed are you, Eternal One, the source of healing. We now take a few moments for a silent prayer from the heart. i uh -huh. 
daughters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. In my rabbinical chaplaincy class, I spent a year connecting deeply with a cohort of five peers. We learned from each other, shared stories of our lives, and counted on one another for support during challenging times. After forming deep connections with the members of this cohort, I knew it would be difficult to end our time together. During our last session, our teacher led us in a closing ritual she gave each of us a small notebook. We passed our notebooks around and each member of the group wrote a positive message to us inside our notebook that we could keep with us always. By the end of the activity, we each had six pages of positive messages with uplifting positive feedback. It sounds like a simple team building activity, but it has stayed with me. I've kept this notebook, and I still savor it as a treasure that uplifts me during hard times. For example, I am afraid of flying. When I fly on airplanes, I have a few comfort objects I bring with me to help me get through the flight. This notebook is one of them. I know that when I am afraid, I can quickly read through the positive messages my peers wrote to me, and I'll feel comforted, supported, and loved. Sadly, one of my best friends from that cohort died this past year. I miss him very much, and when I reread the positive words he wrote to me, I feel his presence with me. I continue to feel connected to him. Reading what he wrote reminds me of the tremendous power of words that even long after a person is gone from this earth, we remember the words they shared with us and how they made us feel. Many of us save letters and cards with positive messages written by loved ones, sometimes rereading an old text message or email written by someone who cared may bring us comfort when we need it most. Whether words are written down or simply engraved on our souls in the form of memory, words are powerful. They have the power to touch our hearts. Of course, we know that words may also be used destructively. Words have the power to hurt people intentionally and unintentionally. A cruel comment, an insult, gossip, Critical feedback given without sensitivity may haunt an individual for years and years. We witness individuals using hateful speech in all different contexts, sometimes to put others down, to divide, to spread hate. We are reminded of the power of speech and how important it is that we use it for good. Jewish tradition teaches us to take responsibility for our words, to use our speech to help heal the world and make it a more positive place. This week's Torah portion, Tazria Mitzorah, teaches us to think carefully about the words we share with others. In this portion, we learn about what our ancestors believed happened to people who became spiritually impure, people inflicted with a skin disease known as tsara'at. These individuals became isolated from the community and needed to undergo a process to become purified before they could rejoin the camp. The rabbis of the Midrash taught that tsara'at came as a result of the sin lashon hara, the negative tongue, gossiping, or using language as a source of cruelty. As their proof text, the rabbis use the story in Numbers where Miriam speaks negatively of Moses' wife and then develops sara'at, the skin disease. The rabbis were concerned that speaking Lashon Hara, 
could lead to devastating consequences. This was the rabbi's interpretation, although we do not believe that speaking negatively about others leads to skin disease or other physical ailment today, we know that using speech to hurt others should be avoided and that it does in fact lead to devastating consequences. May we strive to use our speech as a positive force, not because of fear of sara'at or any other physical ailment, but because communicating with others is a divine gift that we should use toward creating a world filled with justice, kindness, and love. When we treat each individual as though they are created B'Tselem Elohim in the image of God, we will strive to use our speech to uplift one another, to heal the world. Three of our prayers in our daily liturgy encourage us to use our speech for the sake of holiness. Before we pray the Amidah, the heart of our prayer, we pray these words, Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agid techa. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your glory. Our speech may be used for the sake of holiness, not only when we pray, but in any given moment. Whenever we communicate with others, our speech may declare God's glory as we serve as God's partner in creation adding light into the world. We must think carefully about what we say, not always blurting out the first thing that comes to mind, but speaking with intention. When we are feeling impatient, exhausted, overcome with emotion, we sometimes need to take a step back and wait before saying something that we will regret. In Abraham Joshua Heschel's Man's Quest for God, he writes, We shall never be able to understand that the Spirit is revealed in the form of words unless we discover the vital truth that speech has power, that words are commitments. When words are viewed as commitments, we push ourselves to mean what we say, so that we will not make statements that we regret. Another prayer that speaks to using our words positively is Elohai Nitzor. It states, My God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception. Before those who slander me, I will hold my tongue. I will practice humility. Open my heart to your Torah that I may pursue your mitzvot. This idea of practicing humility, it is a value that we work to cultivate, that we practice. It does not always come easily or naturally. It is a value to strive for as we work to control our speech and use it in the most productive and positive way. Now, living in the time of a pandemic, many of us may feel helpless, but we do have the power to use our words to spread peace, wholeness, and comfort to those in need. Writing a letter, calling a friend, sending a text message, writing an inspirational message in sidewalk chalk, we have the ability to use our words to uplift one another reminding each other that we are not alone. One final prayer that reminds us to use our speech to uplift others is Baruch She'amar. In this prayer, we praise God as the one who spoke and the world came to be. This belief that the world came to be from divine speech, that speech leads to creation, illustrates how powerful speech is. God gave human beings the gift of communication, allowing them to continue the work of creation by using words as vehicles toward promoting goodness in the world. May each of us find ways that we too may use speech and communication as a way to bring light into this world, to create positivity in a world that needs it most. May we look for opportunities to use words to spark holiness and uplift one another with peace, 
comfort and wholeness when we need it. May we fill each other's notebooks with positive messages so that when we feel lonely, scared, and sad, we may remember the positive, kind words of others and know that together we will make it through. Shabbat Shalom. I now invite you, if you are able, to please rise for Aleinu Lishabeach. Aleinu Lishabeach la don akol la teit gadu la leot seher breishit shela hoa san gagoye aratzot vila samanu kemishpachot ha'adama Shela ho sam chel kenu kahem, vi gora lenu kechol hamonam, anach nu korahim, umish tachabim umodim, lif ne melech, mache hamachim, hakadosh baruchu, ben Vayadunai lamelech al kol ha'aretz Vayom ha'hu Vayom ha'hu hiyadunai echad Ushemo 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 We now think of our loved ones who have entered into life eternal. Particularly in our hearts and minds, we are thinking of these dear people who have passed during the period of Shiva. We think of Mel Cohen, Jay Galst, Susan Zucro. To those names too, we add those whom we are commemorating the period of Shloshim, the 30-day mourning period. We think of Steve Bernstein, Sheldon Davidoff, Mark Gerskovich, Sylvia Ginlin, Sally Goldman, Perry Granoff, Gerald Grossman, Jerry Kierking, Maynard Peterburs. To those names too, we add those whom we are commemorating their yard site. And though they have passed and seasons gone by, we still feel their presence and strengthened by them today. We think of Catherine Adams, Michael Berman, Martin Bernstein, Mary Bloom, Gary Cohn, Rose Copeland, Louise Eder, Melvin Eisenberg, Virginia Gimbel, Bertha Ginsburg, Judy Ginsburg, Irvin Glass, David Gollin, Alexander Hoffman, Earl Kaplan, Ruth Rose Kohler, Esther Kramer, Michael Kreiman, Betty LaBear, Gerald Lappins, Et Leon, Rose Lukach, Leonard Mendelblatt, Sadie Marar, Morris Menash, Alice Morin, Dorothy Plopper, Esther Rosen, Ruth Rosenthal, Belle Borton Rupa, Gerald Schmerin, Florence Schneiderman, Saul Skolnick, Simon Schumo, Norman Sussman, Tracy Joe Sweet, Catherine Wahlberg, Augusta Weiner, Bertha Willinson, Bonnie Weiss. If there are any names that should be added to this list, and if I pronounced any names incorrect, incorrectly, Please forgive us for the error. We take a moment as we think of all of our loved ones, as we think of the wonder that they've brought to our lives. We think too of all those who died due to war and our terrorism, all those who have passed away in defense of our physical and health and our well being, and certainly in fighting this coronavirus, as well as all those who perished during the Holocaust as we have marked Yom HaShoah this past week as well. We turn now to words sanctified by memory, words glorified by hope, the Kaddish Yatom, the Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Gadal v'yit Kaddash me Raba, b'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute, b'chaye chon uv'yome chon uv'chaye d'cho b'et Yisrael, b'agala uv'izman kari v'yimru amen. Yehei Shmei Rabbah Mivorach Leolam Ulamei Almaya. 
Yit barach vit dabach vit paar vit romam vit nase. Vit adar vit ale vit alal shmed kudisha brichu. Ela min kol birchata vishirata. Tush bechata venechemata. De amiran be alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya. Bechayim alenu ve alko Yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom bim romav. Huya se shalom. Alenu ve alko Yisrael vimru amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. It's now my pleasure to introduce Beth Silver, our congregational president, to make some announcements on behalf of the congregation. Shabbat Shalom, Beth. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and thank you for joining us for services tonight. Tomorrow morning at 9, we have Torah study, followed by our community Shabbat morning services at 10 o'clock, led by Rabbi Rachel. Also tomorrow morning, Rabbi Noah presents story time for young families at 10, and Rabbi Jen leads a conversation with our third to seventh graders, also at 10 tomorrow morning. Join our clergy for Havdalah together at 8 p.m. on Saturday night. On Sunday morning, we have our religious school service that can be viewed at any time, and a mom's Zoom talk at 10, followed by a sing-along with Miss Wendy at 11. On Sunday night at 5.30 on Fox 6 TV, our clergy will lead a service of hope and faith. It's premiering at 5.30, but it's viewable on YouTube later if you missed it live. These services will be broadcast weekly. On Monday morning, Rabbi Jen leads us in mindfulness at 9.30. Shalom Schmooze is at 5.15 on Mondays. This week, we welcome you to discuss your favorite work of art. We offer Minion at 5.45 on Monday through Thursday. Of course, all of these programs are offered virtually as our building is still closed. Check the Shalom website or your email for details on participating in our online community. Shabbat Shalom. We take the opportunity now to count the Omer, the period of time starting from the second night of Pesach, leading all the way up to the holiday of Shavuot, where we celebrate uh, God giving Torah to the Jewish people and we celebrate us receiving the Torah once again. So this time is a time where we can really think about our days, think about the meaning of our days, and think about how precious the time is that we are counting. Let's start together first with the bracha, with the blessing. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kichanu b'mitzvot tzivanu al sfirat ta'omer. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctifies us through mitzvot and commands us to count the Omer. Hayom shisha asar yom shahem shnei shavuot ushneya mi'im la Omer. Today is the 16th day, which makes two weeks and two days of the Omer. Everywhere, 
grace and kindness and loving care, life and peace everywhere. May the radiant love of God's shining presence be a night light from above, and when you wake, may your dreams come true, surrounded by our love. Chem baches ever rachamim, chem Grace and kindness and loving care, life and peace everywhere. Grace and kindness and loving care, life and peace everywhere. As we end Shabbat, the final blessing comes when we turn to people that we love either those who are physically present with us, or you can do it through a phone call, or even thinking of them in the heart and giving them a hug and a kiss or a handshake and wishing them Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom and Lila Tov. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Have a good Shabbos. <laughs>